IT services is a $1 trillion global business, but that large base of spending is highly diverse. Not only are IT services geographically dispersed and often local in nature, but also different types of services customers purchase very different services. At a high level, <clears throat> these include things like support services, professional services, managing technology, consulting, training, education, even the outsourcing of entire IT operations. Software as a service is a new category. Peel the onion layers, however, of services and what you find is customers often require very specific activities that are unique to their organizational needs. Increasingly, the lines between business and IT services are being blurred as the notion of an IT project is morphing into more of a business-driven initiative that is enabled by technology. Organizations are in fact demanding that more business focus comes from their IT service suppliers as, for example, they will be launching revenue generating entities based on cloud technologies or they attempt to monetize big data or even transform their IT organizations from a pure cost center to more of a revenue enabler. How is the services business evolving? How are the mega technology trends impacting customer needs for services and what does the future of services look like? Hello everybody, this is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and we'll address these and other questions with our guest today, Howard Elias, a CUBE alum and the President and Chief Operating Officer of EMC's Global Services Business. Howard? Welcome. Well, thanks. Uh, great to be with you. Good to see you again. And thanks. now, you know, let's start off with some news. We're going to talk about these these big high level Absolutely. trends. Absolutely. You have some news. Uh, you're, you've announced previously this Utah facility, right. Draper, Utah, and you're officially opening it uh, this week. Yeah, I'll be out there in the next couple of days. So. Why Utah? Why not Bangalore? Why Utah? Well, actually, this is our newest global support center. Uh, we actually have support centers uh, here in Hopkinton, uh, in Ireland, uh, in Bangalore, uh, as well as in uh, different uh, places uh, in Asia, including China. Uh, and this is just our newest uh, global support center we're opening up, uh, really to uh, cover off uh, increasing uh, customer needs. Uh, you know, while we do follow the Sun support and we support uh, and continue to grow in all of our geographies around the world, uh, that includes here in the U.S. And so we're investing back here in the U.S. Uh, really to make sure we have local time zone support. Uh, there's some linguistic capability uh, in Utah, which is great for our South American customers, so both uh, Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, and then increasingly we're seeing more more and more U.S.-based customers wanting U.S. soil, U.S. citizen support. Not just the federal government, interestingly, but, uh, but other uh, U.S.-based companies as well. So you mentioned follow the sun. You hear that a lot. Yeah, though. we do. So what does that mean? And it's, it sounds pretty like a simple concept, but talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it, it does sound simple. Very hard to execute, though. And what this really is is uh, what we really refer to as continuous support for the customer and the ability to continue to work a case real time. So let's say a customer has an issue in one uh, geography. Uh, we'll start in that geography during the local business day. But if for whatever reason the problem isn't resolved, or in many cases the customer wants us to continue to monitor uh, the resolution, it might be a performance issue, it might be a host integration issue, uh, we'll go ahead and seamlessly hand off to the next support center during their day time zone. Uh, and that way it allows us to continuously utilize the business day of our support centers around the world, but still take care of the customer need and get that uh, case resolved uh, you know, through complete closure. Now you mentioned uh, Latin America customers. Mm -hmm. You're supporting them out of Utah. Um, so you'll have local or, or Spanish speaking? Absolutely. Uh, Portuguese, presumably, for? Spanish and Portuguese both. Got great linguistic capability. And also Utah is relatively roughly in the time zone. Right. Uh, within a couple of hours of all the South American markets, a very fast-growing uh, market for us. And this really supplements, you know, we've added a lot of uh, e-services capability as well over time. Uh, so all of our chat and customer forum and more and more documentation is localized. But we now want to back that up. Uh, with local language support when they do have to talk to a live human being. So specifically, what activities are going to pl take place in the Utah facility? It, it really is the full gamut of our support capability. So it's uh, taking first call, uh, triaging the uh, issue, getting it to the right subject matter expert, 
uh, integrating that then with all of our other customer support activities, so our e-services platform, uh, connection into engineering, uh, all of the log analysis, uh, escalation management, all the way through to uh, the closure of the case. Now, how many people, roughly? Uh, well, we've uh, committed to uh, hire uh, up to 500 people over the next couple of years, and we're well, well on track to making that happen. Now, I know some other technology vendors. I mean, Cisco, for example, has a, a presence there, and there may be others. Uh, do you feel like there's a good base of skill sets there already? Are you trying to train them up? or what's a Absolutely. We're very excited about the great skills, uh, IT skills that we're seeing in the area. That was one of the selection criteria among others. You know, we looked at a competitive business infrastructure, uh, great IT skills, uh, the, the local U.S. citizen, U.S. soil, linguistics support that we talked about, and just great, uh, you know, sort of uh, cost of living and a great place to live and a great place to work. So all of those came together, but first and foremost, it started with great IT skills, great colleges, great universities, and people really wanting to live and work there with those IT skills. And good powder. <laughs> um, so. Now you also, uh, Howard, mentioned that not just federal customers are demanding some local presence, it's others. I mean. People like financial services, are they pushing you for that? Uh, we're seeing it out of the telecommunications okay. industry, the financial services industry. You know, as uh, regulations continue to develop uh, and more and more uh, companies want to think about where they're actually managing their data. Uh, you know, cloud is wonderful. Uh, and you know, as you know, EMC is a, is a huge proponent and thought leader uh, in cloud. But it's also thinking through where and how you manage customer data. And more and more customers, we're seeing this internationally as well. You know, German customers want to manage their customer data in Germany. So that's fine. We can help them build those cloud services in Germany. Well, no different here in the U.S. Do you think that's um, psychological? Is it more compliance or regulation? -driven? I think it's a combination, right? Yeah. It's, it's philosophical, it's psychological. Uh, but in some industries, and then certainly when you talk about public sector and federal government, it's actual law. Will, will customers pay a premium for that, or do you just have to figure out the cost on your end? I, I think it's just a necessary cost of doing business going forward. Yeah, okay, so so the, the justification for you is obviously it makes you more competitive, you gain market share, happier customers, and it... And we're doing all of those. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, we've had Tony Kolish on theCUBE before, Howard, talking about uh, support services in particular. Absolutely. I know he runs that business for you. How have support services changed in the last several years? Yeah, it's a great question, and uh, you know we really have this notion of uh, support anytime, anywhere, and any, any way the customer wants to consume it, right? So, you know, this is really part of uh, that growing capability that we're building worldwide. You know, whether the customer wants to come in by phone, which, by the way, is now uh, less than 50% and getting much, much less over time. Folks want to come in off the web. They want to come in off their mobile devices. They want to uh, utilize uh, chat. They want to actually collaborate with other customers to actually solve, problem and inno uh, solve problems and innovate solutions. So it's really this notion of any way, any time that a customer wants to come and interact with us, we want to be able to supply that capability to them. And so, uh, you know, this notion of anytime, anywhere, any access method uh, is really increasingly take hold. And this is now the mantra of Tony and his team. It's interesting. I mean, I I, I'm, I'm older, I like being on the phone, but mm -hmm. I think young people, they, like you say, want to chat, they want to use email. They I don't, don't know, do your kids call you anymore? Mine yeah, just never. text me. Right, they text me. Right? <laughs> that's, that's the way, you, if you want to get a hold of your kids, you, you text them. That's exactly now, right. Now, another one of your uh, managers that we've had on theCUBE is, uh, is Tom Roloff. Absolutely. Um, and people used to think of EMC as really supporting you know, disk drives you know, <laughs> to 10, 20 years ago. Uh, Clearly in talking to folks like Tom, that's changing. Uh, I almost see it as the tip of the spear as consulting. You're having a lot more CIO interactions. Talk about how EMC Global Services has changed in the last five or seven years. Uh, tremendously. You know, uh, we talked about uh, Tony and his team, and really first and foremost is delivering the industry's best TCE. And, you know, job one for us is always take care of our customers, deliver that best customer experience, uh, and we continue to get accolades for that and uh, are acknowledged as an industry leader there. But to your point, we really have evolved over the years to, fu to uh, provide the full gamut of capability that our customers are looking for. So Tom, as you know, runs our consulting business, so we provide a set of advisory and consulting services to help the strategy piece up front, help customers assess their environment, understand their business requirements, uh, their challenges, their objectives, their aspirations, and then translate that into a roadmap. 
what steps do we need to take on the journey to cloud? Uh, steps ac uh, along virtualization, big data, trust, security. So we've built a whole series of advisory services. Then of course we have ML, Krakauer and her business, the uh, implementation business, but it also includes a managed services business and a residency business. So the way to really think about this is EMC Global Services now really provides that full life cycle of services to a customer. From advisory services to implementation, operations, whether it's managed or through residency, and then the great service and support. Another thing you're going to be seeing increasingly is then the ability to not only for us to do this directly, but with and through partners. So we're really enabling our partner ecosystem to deliver this value to customers as well. All right, let's talk about that because, um, Joe, I listened to the, to the calls, I've followed EMC for a number of years, and, and you and Joe have always said, we're not going to compete with our partners. That's right. Um, but that, that sounds good, but it's not an easy thing to Look, do. Look, in reality, I mean, it's always a fine line. Yeah, so talk about that fine line. Matt, no problem competing with IBM and HP, right? Of course not. Go, go hard after them. But you've got a number of other services partners. Um, where do they pick up and where do you leave off? You know, it's a great question. And, and I always say water finds its own level. You know, we are first and foremost a technology company. I say that as the head of services, Joe, and the rest of the leadership say that as well. Services to us is an enabling capability, helping our customers and our partners uh, maximize the value out of the use that they get from our technology. That is what our services offerings are all about. Some customers want to have that capability directly. Others uh, want to work with a set of uh, key partners. And what we're seeing increasingly, by the way, is more and more partners want to rely on us for much of this infrastructure component, and then they can add value above that. Applications, business process, workflow, delivering IT as a service. So water finds its own level. The best way that this works is where it meets with the customer. First of all, the customer chooses, number one. And then our account teams work directly with the customer and the partner ecosystem to do what's best. There is not enough total capacity to help customers deliver cloud, virtualization, big data, trust, and security. And so working together and collaboratively is the best way. Yeah, so you're in a situation where there's more demand and supply, there's plenty to go around for you in the ecosystem. And, and uh, Okay, now take VCE for example. Yeah. When VCE was launched, you were heavily involved in that. Um, Absolutely. And, and communicated it, I know, to the analyst community. And now VCE has really become you know, a product. It, it brings a lot of services along with it. And talk a little bit about that transformation. And, and same thing happens there. Now here's a case where we've said, look, customers, some customers want to continue to buy a la carte and they'll either integrate themselves, they'll have EMC integrate, they'll have a partner integrate. Others have said, you know, a converged infrastructure offering is the best, let's buy it prefix. Uh, and so the recipe is already done, and in fact it's already been baked. And so we deliver now this pro product called the, the V-Block, the converged infrastructure, it has taken off phenomenally. And to your point, the services, again, there are strategic upfront advisory services in many cases that are necessary with the customer, certainly implementation services and support services. Uh, all, uh, VCE absolutely works with parents and partners. They've got enabling capability themselves, but then it's the customer choice. But a key thing we have done is enabled VCE to deliver that seamless support. They are that one throat to choke. Anytime there's a, an issue or a challenge with a V-Block installation, customer calls VCE, they handle that case even as they come back to the parents and they'll work with many of the support centers that we've just talked about we, here today. We just did a study in Wikibon just looking at the converged opportunity and it's, it's enormous. I mean, it's it like is. a $400 billion TAM, I mean, it's huge. <clears throat> and the interesting thing to us was while VCE's doing well, there aren't a lot of uh, pre-engineered solutions out there. There's, there's, there's you guys, there's you know, Oracle Exadata, and everybody else is really more reference architectures, but yes. what we found is the reference architecture, to your early point, earlier point about some partners want to do it themselves, the reference architecture business is enormous. Um, and so talk about that a little bit. How do you see that shaping out, and what does it mean for services? Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, we actually started life in VCE as a reference architecture. Right and found that customers said, you know, that's odd and interesting, but it's still a lot of work. So more and more customers did want that pre-engineered integrated product. But to your point, what we're now seeing, especially in the mid-market and lower end, uh, both customers and partners want a bit more flexibility. You know, the, the great thing about V-Block is you can have it in any color you want as long as it's black, right? And, and you get the benefits uh, associated with that because it is engineered. It is integrated. It does work in the use cases we've tested. 
and it's supportable as a product. But uh, more and more customers uh, and use cases demand a bit more flexibility. So we do see the need for reference architectures as well. Uh, you will see EMC play in that space even bigger than we already have. We have our EMC proven solutions, right, that we work with today. But we're going to work with our partner ecosystem on developing uh, even more broad uh, based reference architectures. And then the services uh, need to go along with that. And again, it's going to be about us enabling our partners with the reference architecture and those enabling services. Yeah, I've been around. the interesting thing to me about the whole VC initiative is that it really drives VMware <coughs> and, and further into the, into the ecosystem. And it's a play that EMC has on the server business because you don't directly compete we don't participate in the value chain of the server, but we do through VMware, to your and, point. And there are more virtual servers now than physical servers, and That's that right. drags along storage, it That's drags right. along partner revenue for guys like Cisco, and it obviously drags along uh, services. Yes. Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, uh, a little bit about, uh, I want to come back to the, to the Utah yeah. facility. So this week you're out there, uh, you got the governor coming in. We do on Wednesday. We have a so big you must be excited uh, about that. grand opening celebration. Yeah, uh, okay. State and local officials, including uh, the governor, absolutely. And uh, and, and the, the local employees will be there. And, absolutely, uh, we're going to do. Uh, we have a whole sequence of events. We have uh, you know town hall meetings. We have customer events, partner uh, uh, activity, and then the uh, actual uh, uh, grand opening event with the uh, the governor and local officials uh, will be Wednesday morning. Now, how will you measure the success of uh, an initiative like this? What are the kinds of things you look at? Well, we really. Uh, have a whole set of KPIs as you would expect, right? So in terms of the productivity, the service levels, both transactional and loyalty surveys that we do. At the end of the day, it's all about the voice of the customer though. Uh, you know, do, did the customer get what they uh, paid for? Did they get what they deserve? Uh, and did we meet and or exceed the expectations of the customer? And you know, we've been in operation now for a couple of months uh, and uh, the talent that we've seen, the energy, the passion, and all of the KPIs that we're already measuring are way ahead of schedule. So we're very, very excited about the start of Utah. So my last question, Howard, is let's look ahead to the future. How, you know, services have changed so much. Mm. Now you got cloud, big data, transformation, big theme at, uh, at, at EMC World. Trust yep. is another theme. How do you see services changing in the next you know, five to 10 years? Well, we're going to continue to uh, evolve in the set of offerings that we provide to the marketplace. Uh, our portfolio will continue to grow. Our capability and capacity will continue to grow. Uh, one of the things that we are working on, in fact, this year is frankly simplifying that interface to the customer and even to the EMC field because Go back to the conversation, you know, we, we were one thing five or seven years ago today, a very broad and rich portfolio of services throughout that life cycle. So for us, we want to simplify and in fact amplify the capability that we bring to the customer. And we want to do that not only directly, but through the uh, partner ecosystem. So look for, especially in 2012, us uh, simplifying and amplifying uh, the capabilities we bring to the marketplace and doing more enablement with and through partners. So services is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, when you talk to customers, you ask them why they buy product, price, it all comes down to at least half of the value comes down to services. This guy's team makes it happen. Howard, thanks very much for spending some time with us and uh, good luck with the launch and uh, the rest of the year. Thanks, good catching up with you. Right. Take care.